All right, hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Gold from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Bob Rich, who is in, of all places, Surprise, Arizona. <laughs> How are you doing, Bob? I'm doing fantastic, John. How are you? Yeah, as long as it's not a surprise to you that you're there, Bob, that's uh, it's all good. Fantastic. <laughs> so, um, Bob is a master trainer in the sales industry, over 12,000 training hours and over 7,000 professionals trained to date. And obviously, you're very passionate about helping salespeople. And just before coming on air, we were talking about mindset. And this is what mm -hmm. we want to talk about today, how important, how important mindset. And I just think that, I mean, it's always been important, but I think nowadays there are so many influences and people are so distracted and... Uh, we live in this crazy culture. I call it the comparison culture where people are com comparing themselves on social media constantly with other people and all these influences that are kind of affecting people's mindset and how they show up every day. So, so Bob, why is mindset and, and what is it's so important? And what is your approach to improving and optimizing mindset? I'm so glad you asked that. This is such an important issue today because mindset is how we think is really shapes what we believe and how we feel. And then our beliefs, our, our actions are actually a reflection of what we believe. And I, and I talk to so many people every day about what they think. And the example I love to use is a game of golf. Most people believe that the, the game of golf is played on a course of about 7,200 7, yards. But in actuality, the game of golf is played on a five-inch line right between the ears. Mm -hmm. And when I look at what sets the top as top golfers apart from the field, it is mindset. And the reason I focus on mindset is so often when we think we've changed our mindset, it is generally a result of an emotional charge. It's we go to that motivational speaker or we go to that, watch that YouTube and we get that motivational, that emotional charge and it lasts for maybe a week or two. What I like to do is focus on not only the emotional hit, but focus on a true paradigm change. Because when a paradigm truly changes, it doesn't go away. And when a person changes paradigm, it's a permanent change and it's a new foundation that they can build on. That's why it's so important. So how do you, what do you say to people? Because I, I agree with you. Um, you know, we're great at going to see motivation speakers. We're great at watching videos or reading a book and going, oh, this is this is life changing. And then and then this the applying of it. Well, that gets a little bit hard because it's OK for maybe the first few days. But after that, it just becomes like hard work. So we abandon it. So how do you get people to uh, really embrace change and bring it forward and like maintain it? Well, it's intentional. And like my, my podcast, which is called Intentional Leadership, Navigating Through Circumstances, it is an intention. And when we need to change, is it intentional or are we serious about that change? And what I have learned through the years is changing a paradigm is not just a moment decision. It is an intentional process. And we talk about how to change that paradigm through an intentional process. But it really comes down to systems and processes. It's about discipline. And I like the definition of discipline is doing what you should do when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not. And persistence is nothing more than discipline and action. It's not easy. It's very simple. So when we put processes and systems in place and our intention is to change and make a permanent change, that's where it starts. The second step is knowing where we want to be and knowing where we are today. Once we understand those two points and we understand the gap is there, now we can work on closing that gap, which is one of the instrumental parts of changing mindset. Yeah, I, mean, I like what you're saying there about the discipline and the process piece, because let's face it, uh, some people in sales, and they tend to be the people who aren't performing very well, will hide behind this idea of going, oh, yeah, I don't need too much process or discipline because, you know, sales is an art form and blah, blah, blah. Whereas we know the reality and research backs this up that the top performing salespeople, sales teams, organizations have defined processes with defined steps within with defined st stages and steps within those stages mm -hmm. and they rigorously enforce and the top salespeople rigorously follow process so yeah. that's that's one of the that, that's one of the great myths that you know i'd love to be able to put to bed is this idea that somehow process and discipline doesn't apply to sales 
agree with you 100%. And one of the things I, I love to uh, instill into my clients each and every day, whether it's a one-on-one or I'm teaching a sales class, is insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. We all heard that before, but the one I like to add is success is doing the same thing over and over, expecting the same results. Mm-hmm. And that goes right back into what you just said. It's about a system. It's about a process. And it's not really about just doing this and this and, and hope it works together. It is a disciplined process. That's why my sales system, I call it a sales blueprint. Why? Because any system that is done the same way every single time will always have some level of success. Mm-hmm. And then you always bump up against this issue where people go, oh, change your mind. You know, you say, oh, you need to change your mindset. And they, and then, you know, they try and then they go, well, you know, that's just me. That's just like how I am. That's just who I am. And I always say, well, that's fine. If, if that's who you are and it's not getting you what you want, well, maybe you want to change. You know, mm-hmm. this idea of just be yourself. Well, if yourself isn't the best version of you, then don't be yourself. Be a slight, be slightly mm-hmm. someone different, okay? I, I've heard that, and I love how you're going down this direction because this is exactly the right direction, and that is one of the myths out there. I talk a lot about priority management, and one of the things that people believe that we can manage time, and we can't manage time. Why? Is because it's a constant. What we can do is manage our priorities, which is a change in how we think about time. And one of the biggest myths is multitasking works. It's not about thinking of several things at the same time. It's about focused on one thing at a time. And sales is the same way. Mindset is the same way. It's a focus. It's not necessarily easy, but it's simple. But it really goes back to it's finding what works and being consistent with it. Yeah, 100%, because to me, multitasking really is just doing a lot of things badly or in a mediocre fashion. It's never, you can't do, you can't do a number of things really, really well or optimally at the same time. It, it just doesn't work. And I think that's the, that's the piece is I, I think it's, it's, are you prepared to be disciplined? Are you prepared to follow the step? Because don't say you want to be successful if you're not prepared to do the work and do the things that will make you successful, right? Absolutely correct. And it's really the grind. It's one of my favorite articles by Kobe Bryant. He had an article that says, what is your 4 a.m.? And he talked about what is your 4 a.m.? And we see his success. It was about the lights and the championships and the, and the game winning shot. But really, he talked about, yeah, that was the reward. That's what the payoff what was important is what he was doing at 4 a.m. He was in the locker room. He was in the weight room. He was practicing when nobody else is out there. What makes successful people different? Number one, they're willing to go through the grind that other people aren't willing to go through. They're disciplined. They're persistent. But most of all, what we also understand about about successful people is they strive to be significant. Success is about what is going to happen to me. Significance is about others. And when we can take our success to that next level and focus on how to serve other people and make their lives different, that's truly when we become significant. And what I found is the greatest sales people of all are people that strive to be successful but most of all their dream is to be significant yeah and i couldn't agree more and i also heard about kobe bryant about the fact that how often how many hours he put in practicing his basic shots not the fancy ones not the three point, just the very simple ones and i think that's the other piece is that you have to always be careful about the fundamentals. Are you spending enough time on the fundamentals? Are you still doing the fundamentals properly? It's like I'm I'm a I'm a martial artist and in, in martial arts sometimes, you know, you go into class and the master goes back to basic stances and basic kicks and, and, and punches and stuff and it's like I've been doing this you've been doing it so many years, but there's mm-hmm. always but there's always something to tweak or there's always something that you've gotten into a bad habit on or whatever. And that's how I always encourage people, whatever your role is, and particularly in sales, is go back and revisit and see, are you doing the fundamentals really well or are you kind of skipping over them? Absolutely. My favorite phrase is get back to the basics, stick to the basics. And my networking system, we call it networking excellence. And I talk about it when when my career is at its best. And I'm on the top of the mountain. I'm focused on what got me there is the basics. When I'm in the valley and my momentum may not be where I want it to be, what gets me out of the valley is the basics. And that's the consistency and discipline no matter where you're at. 
I love the idea about the martial artist. It's about the basics. And no matter how advanced a person gets, mm -hmm. it's to focus on how the basics are always the foundation of your success and your significance. Yeah, and uh, absolutely. And in, in many ways, and I think this is a great thing that if you're in a slump as a salesperson or you're having difficulties or you're not where you want to be with your quota for the year or whatever, is go back and sort of just examine what am I doing? Am I doing the basics? Because if you can go back and you can figure out that you're doing all of the basics, all of the fundamentals well, then you know that things will happen eventually. You'll get back on track. But it's a great exercise to go through because sometimes that's all you have to fall back on. Absolutely. And business is the same way. And as a business coach, I teach my clients the same thing, whether it's in a seminar, a public speaker, or even one on one. It's about the basics. And just as a, an athlete, a professional athlete, they win championships, but they understand the basics. The same thing is true with every business owner and entrepreneur and aspiring uh, entrepreneur as well. It's about what is the basics, what got you there, and how to build those foundations and how to keep those foundations at your core. Yeah, because going back to mindset, because you can normally, I think, identify that when you go back and you look at what you, if you're in a slump or whatever, and you look at what I'm doing, the fundamentals, and maybe, maybe you are, there's the next question to ask yourself is what's my attitude towards it right am i really that am i really that motivated right now am i really putting in 100% am i really doing it do i really believe in myself do i believe in my product do i believe in all of these things because i think that's the piece that is is really critical if you're doing the basics that's great and that's the first great step second part mm -hmm. is how are you doing them in terms of your mindset it's the willingness. It goes back to discipline. It goes back to persistency. Are you willing to go through that grind to get what you want? Are you willing to make those sacrifices? One of my favorite quotes that I put online every now and then is, today, I, today what I'm going to focus on is what others are not willing to do. Tomorrow, I don't have to do what other people have to do each and every day. And, and, and really, when you look at the sacrifice and the discipline, it really comes to self-control. And self-control is very vital in the mindset process because are we willing to wait? Are we willing to set back? Are we willing to listen? Are we willing to take those opportunities to learn and not necessarily move forward, but many times move side to side? And that goes, everything goes back to discipline. So is the willingness there and all of these things, just as you said, is encompassed in what is your attitude? Yeah. Are you willing to turn up and give it 100 to 150 percent every time, even if the last 10 times were didn't work out right or 20 times or whatever, whatever slump you're in? Are you prepared? Because at the end of the day, I agree with you. The people who succeed are the people who continually pick themselves up and give 150 percent, even if there's nothing to even if there's no indication that it's going to work this time. If, if that was true, we would not have the light bulb. Mm -hmm. Why is the light bulb didn't work until the several hundredth attempt? And if, and if he did not continue to do it the same way over and over again and find out what didn't work and continue to stick with the process, we would not have the light bulb. Why do we have the technology today? Why do we have what we have today? Mm -hmm. It's because somebody was willing to go through the grind and make sure that everything was the way it should be and find out what worked and what didn't. And their attitude was, I'm not going to quit until I have no other choice, which allowed them to get where they needed to be. And that grind, that attitude is everything. Yeah. And, and to your point is that grind and attitude is, like, you know, continuing. It's like doing those. It's like Friday afternoon. And instead of saying, you know, I'm just going to kick those last 10 prospecting calls to the curb and I'll just pick it up on Monday that you say to yourself, no, nah, I'm going to do the 10 because, hey, you never know. Friday afternoon, you might ever even catch somebody, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like today, it's a Friday afternoon. It's two o'clock in the afternoon here and in the uh, Pacific time zone. And what are we doing? We're having this great conversation. Yeah. Why is because this is important and somebody needs to hear it. And that's that's the difference between somebody who's willing to go that extra step and somebody that was willing to stop before that extra step. Talk a lot about stumbling stones and stepping st stumbling blocks and stepping stones. And when I look back at my life, many of my successes are a result of somebody that tried to hurt me, a bad situation, a negative situation. And what I have discovered is most of the, the stepping stones in my life really could have been a stumbling block if I allowed them. Mm -hmm. They both 
same. The question is, is do we see them as a stepping stone or do we say, see them as a stump, stumbling block? When we see things as stepping stone, we always make that step forward regardless of the intent of the situation. And that's how successful and significant people are the ones that are that top percent of who understand how mindset is so important. Yeah, and I love what you just said there about the stumbling blocks and the stepping stones because sometimes the stepping stones are actually as a result, as you say, of something bad happening, of something, and you could just sort of sit back and go, oh, well, throw your hands up and quit. Or you could go, okay, you know something, I'm going to be even more determined. I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to move on. So I think that's, I think that's a great point that you raised there, that stepping stones aren't always like wonderful opportunities that are presented to you. Sometimes they're the debris of some disaster, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. A great example I like to use. I was with a company for many, many years, and I did what I love to do. I was teaching and training for years. I taught four days a week, 10 hours a day, four, hour, four weeks out of the month. I had 48 classes a year, and, and, and really there was one person in that company that did not want me there because my numbers were too high. Mm-hmm. And he did everything he could to fire me. Uh, he did everything he could to get me to leave, and it didn't work. And so what did they do? They took away my raises. They took away my my conferences. They took away opportunities to learn. And for seven years, they didn't allow me to do anything. And I remember during that time, I was frustrated. Why is everybody else getting promotions? Why is everybody else getting raises? Well, as I look back, he did me the greatest favor ever. Because during that seven years, I honed my processes. I honed my systems. I honed my sales systems. And, and it got to the point that I said, I can do this on my own. And because of that, I was able to launch my own company and launch my own business, launch my own business practice. So as I look back, I often thought this particular gentleman, I've often said, I want to send him a thank you card by saying, thank you for being a jerk because <laughs> what he did was the biggest favor in the world. If I got what I deserved, I might've still be there, but because it was the negative things that hit me and, and, and pushed me forward, that big stepping, that big stumbling block actually turned into one of the greatest stepping stones of my career, which is why I'm able to do what I do today by impacting so many people. Yeah, and and I love that example, and I, I love the fact that some of our greatest teachers in life are the people who, at the time, we prescri- perceive as probably screwing us the most or doing bad things to us. And you know something, who cares whether... The, what the reality of was whether they were bad people or not in the end but the point is that you look back and I'm and I totally agree with you I learned during my career through some and um, the odd adversity I learned adaptability and now I'm I'm like Phew. I know I can adapt to anything I want at any time because I've done it because I've had to do it and I think that's it and I love that uh, that uh, that example you show you talked of there because um sometimes when these things are happening it's a message from the universe to go do something go go take your talent somewhere absolutely i agree and, and even during the time yes there's discouragements and there's sure. but looking back as i look back at all my 25 plus years i look back and i know i remember all those different things i thought were negatives and things that was in my career but as I look forward, they were actually things that propelled my career. It was a difference in attitude, and it was also a difference in mindset. Yeah, no, 100%. Well, what a great way to end, uh, Bob. We're uh, bumping up against the end of our session here. Uh, but before we go, can you tell people a little bit more about yourself, what you do, how they can find out more about you? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, again, I'm a, my name is Bob Rich. I'm a certified business coach and corporate trainer because I have a passion to help those who are successful and know they're successful, but they're having a hard time getting to that next level. What I do is help them get to that next level. Uh, we do it through systems and processes by partially by my business partner, Brian Tracy, who's been a, uh, a significance for so many years, plus my 25 years of experience, and we get results usually in three areas. We help people increase their productivity. We help people increase their profits. But most of the time, we want to help people increase their quality of life. Uh, you can reach me by my on my cell phone at 623-628-1996. Please visit my website at bobrish.com. And also, if you get on my LinkedIn and follow me on my LinkedIn page, you'll see a lot of my articles and a lot of my content on there, which can give you that value each and every day. Love to reach out to, reach out to you. Talk to me. Let me know what where you're at, and I'd love to have that conversation with you. And it's a, it'd be a privilege to be able to help you get to that next level if that's where you're looking to get to. 
Yeah, that's fantastic, Bob. And and you can tell, uh, those of you listening or watching, um, you can tell Bob's passion coming through. And just one thing I'd just like to add, and, and, and I'm glad you uh, emphasized the idea of the coach, right, is I think this is the biggest single failing of people in their careers is not investing in coaching at times. I personally have done it myself. I've invested in a in a coach when at different times in my career when I felt I needed it. And I feel that that's something that people overlook and they go, oh, well, it's too expensive. And I and I, my challenge to you would be to especially to those people is to how much have you spent on your hobby this year? Uh, if you if you take a look at how much you spent on your hobby this year, maybe you should divert some of that into coaching for the thing that puts bread on your table. All right. So this is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Thank you all for this. And uh, I look forward to another interview really soon. Thank you.